Welcome to DCS Beginner's Tutorial. I am Top Gun with the AKA War Dog Squadron. So, you, I'm assuming if you're watching this that you've just bought DCS or you've had it and you're just now starting to get into it. And when you get DCS, you don't have any modules other than the unarmed version of P51 and the SU-27T. And eventually you're definitely going to want more modules than that. So. How do you get more modules? Well, you got two ways. You can either go directly through their the ED's website and purchase them there, uh, or you can actually do it straight through the program by going up to here at the module manager, and you'll see all of the modules that are available to you that you have not already purchased. And you can see their price. You can get a general rundown of what the what each one entails. You can also see additional downloadable content, which is usually campaigns, things like that. And you can also click on install to see which ones you already have. Uh, and you can uh, scribble down their serial numbers or enter the serial numbers if uh, you just bought them and installed them. Uh, if you don't do it here, then when the first time you launch a mission that involves that aircraft, it'll ask you to input, input your serial number. If you run into a technical problem with a module, uh, you can this is where you would go to uninstall that particular module you don't have to completely uninstall and reinstall DCS you can do the modules individually uh, so you can kill it here and then re-download it through the module manager and if you do uh, buy one or more modules through the website when you launch DCS and you come into the module manager here you'll see a pop-up that actually shows the uh, that shows the available modules that are ready to download that you've purchased recently. Uh, all you have to do is just click yes and it'll go automatically and go grab the files, pull them in, install them for you and you should be good to go. So now that you have modules, what do you do? Alright, well first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to set up controls for the aircraft and that's where you have to go over to here with this gear icon and you'll need to go to the controls tab from here you need to select the aircraft so you'll see everything here has two entries one for sim one for game game is basically like an arcade mode for the aircraft um, I'm not going to really cover that because I'm dealing strictly with the simulation part of it so you're generally going to want sim so I'm going to select the Spitfire and once you've selected an aircraft everything that you see here is specific to that just that aircraft uh, you don't have to map everything that you see here, but this is everything that you can. Uh, you'll see the default keyboard key bindings for each of these. Uh, you potentially can change them if you want. I recommend don't doing that. Uh, if you have a controller like the Thrustmaster Warthog that comes with the target software that controls uh, setup and whatnot, you can use that instead of going through here. Uh, although if you do need to have the key bindings for a command this is where you would go to find that out um, if you want to go ahead and map directly uh, please note before you do this you will want to go ahead and actually plug in all your peripherals your stick rudder throttle etc before you launch DCS so that it will populate that in this control list you'll see that I've got a column here for every single peripheral so let's say Let's pick a command here, just something to, let's say gear. Now let's do labels. I don't use labels, but why not? So let's say I want to add a particular command to a, a switch or a button on my throttle. So you need to find the command in you know the command that you're looking for select that and then you'll go to the column of the peripheral you're looking for so in my case the throttle and you go ahead and click on that cell now you double click on it and this window pops open and now any button that you press on that particular controller so in my case the throttle will map this and you can see right there it is hit OK and you're done uh, if you accidentally hit a button on a different controller while this was active say like my joystick or something it wouldn't it wouldn't register it because it's looking for a button specifically on that peripheral so if you hit a different peripheral it's not going to recognize it 
and that really is all there is to the controls as far as setting them up so really the the big challenge is just figuring out which of these controls are the truly important ones that you need to have at your fingertips you know to put on your stick and throttle and whatnot uh, best thing to do find some veterans talk to them online or through forums find out hey how do you have your your control set up which which things do you have where uh, is the best thing to do once you have a, an idea of the commands that you want to have on your stick and throttle then you can get to the dirty work of actually figuring out what needs to go where and then start mapping the stuff out now as far as a new module bear in mind there may be some things that are automatically done for you by ED that you may not want like this stuff right here this is pretty typical uh, they'll have views set up uh, presumably ED does this so that people who don't have track IR can use a hat switch or something and they can look around the cockpit uh, if you have track IR you don't want any of this so what you do is you click on one of these items and then hit clear and you'll have to do that for all of these it's a bit of a pain but yeah so something else that you'll also need to do along those lines is go into your actual axes commands so in this drop down pick axis commands and you'll see commands here for pitch roll rudder throttle and you'll notice that there's entries on all of your peripherals for all of these again that's redundant you don't need these so for obviously for pitch you only want the joystick so you know the rest of these get rid of them you don't need them and same thing goes for roll obviously it's only the joystick is going to be doing that so get rid of the rest of those and same thing goes for rudder and throttle and potentially wheel brakes as well uh, some aircraft modules will have Act, uh, will have commands listed in the axis commands for left wheel brake and what right wheel brake sometimes they're not listed here sometimes they're actually in the all commands and they'll be probably under wheel brakes and sometimes it'll be different wheel brakes in increase and decrease but here you got you know just a wheel brakes so it depends on the aircraft module as far as how you set that up and last but not least if we go into access commands so for the pitch roll throttle rudder you can actually do fine tuning of those if you hear somebody talking about curves this is what they're talking about you go into access tune and you can set up dead zones so how far do you have to move the stick before it actually starts registering uh, saturation x and y basically it's one, one, one way I guess to describe is how sensitive I'm probably not describing that very well uh, and the last one is curvature uh, basically it's kind of a think of it as like a I call it a damper basically so the more curve there is the farther you have to move your stick before it starts registering a significant input in that direction so if you move just a little bit it's just going to give you a soft gentle input amount Whereas, you know, you go put it to the stop and it'll register full amount. Uh, it's normally set to linear by default, so curve zero, but you can usually tailor this to however you want. So some aircraft are a little more sensitive and jittery than others, so it's going to be to your taste. Uh, but that's really it from a control standpoint. Uh, it is a little bit of work to get started, but it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions, please contact me. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.